Welcome back. As we've mentioned, we've seen members of Congress speak out after being briefed on Iran this afternoon by the president's top advisors. And so far, uh, from the reactions from lawmakers, have been decidedly mixed. Uh, and as you saw there from Mike Lee, some uh, less than mixed. Joining me now is New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez, who was also in the briefing. He's the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Menendez, good to see you, sir. Thank you for coming on. Good to see you. Let me just start with you. I, I don't know if you've heard about your colleague, Republican colleague Mike Lee. He called it the worst briefing he's received in his nine years serving in the Senate. Uh, he was very upset about it, very upset about the lack of details, but more upset about this admonition that said that you guys weren't even allowed to debate future Iran um, uh, uh, military uh, co uh, potential confrontations. What was your take on this briefing? Well, Chuck, I went in with three specific questions, which I got to ask. Number one, what was the, uh, the essence of the intelligence that gave you a determination that there was a imminent threat? What was the nature of the threat? What were the targets? And three, what was the intelligence that led you to believe that the elimination of Soleimani alone eliminates the threat? And, you know, since I can't get into the specifics, I'll characterize it as simply saying, I didn't get any substantive answers to any of those three questions. And those three questions, the answers to them are essential to understand whether the president's actions were the right actions, whether they were legal, and more importantly, where do we go from here? So I think that uh, I also share uh, Senator Lee's uh, concern that uh, this administration, and there's always been a, a tensions between different administrations of That's Congress right. on who has what authorities, but this administration has total disdain for Congress and its role under the Constitution. And uh, the bottom line is, from what I gathered, they believe they have the authority to do everything they need to do because they were asked specifically and they would not say that at what point do you need to come to Congress if you're considering other actions? Do you trust your brief? Do you trust the briefers today? Do you think they told you that what they told you was the truth, even if they didn't tell you everything you wanted to hear? I think they characterized the intelligence in a way that was conducive to what they ultimately decided uh, to do or did. And that's a problem for me. You know, I spent a long time when I was in the House of Representatives when we were told that's not, that's, there were weapons. You're giving me a, you're, I was just gonna say, that's a little WMD uh, flashback for me here. For, yeah, for me too. Listen, I, I spent a long time when I was a House member and the, the, the vote was coming up on the war in Iraq and I spent time in the intelligence room to determine whether or not there was evidence of weapons of mass destruction. And I came to the conclusion not only was there no evidence of weapons of mass destruction, no clear and present danger, no imminent threat. Uh, and so I, came, I, I was in the minority, including among Democrats in voting against the war in Iraq. And I have visions again of intelligence being shaped uh, you know, in a way that draws the conclusion. And I, I was totally unsatisfied on that and on the belief the administration, uh, that the administration believes that they have every authority necessary, which they don't. That's why I think Senator Kane's uh, War Powers Resolution yeah. as a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is so critical. The Pentagon today, uh, we just got a report uh, from the Pentagon uh, earlier in the broadcast, essentially feeling as if, Secretary Esper's feeling as if, hey, the, the United States has restored deterrence again. The, the muted response from Iran uh, uh, is proof of that. So let me ask you, Soleimani is dead? No U.S. casualties from Iran's uh, retaliation? They seem to back off. Um, do the results trump your skepticism? No pun intended, trump my skepticism. Yeah, I guess uh, I did. didn't look, mean to do that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> look, uh, the, the, the jury's out on that. Uh, you know, this is a moment in time, but we'll have to see whether all of those proxy groups, Hezbollah, uh, you know, the Houthis in Yemen, whether the uh, Shia militias uh, in Iraq act or don't act and take actions. And yeah. in which way is it for the administration? If he was the head of all these entities, well, when you took out the head of all of these entities, they have no direction. That means they can do what they want on their own. Uh, or if you're going to say Iran's still responsible for them, then he wasn't uniquely the one individual that could direct him. So it mm -hmm. still remains to be seen what happens. 
You were not for the Iraq, uh, excuse me, the Iran nuclear deal. You were, you were one of the Democrats against the deal, but you were also against the president pulling out of the deal. Uh, I know that. The president seemed to hint today that it's possible somehow that they could begin negotiations. Can you imagine any administration getting a better deal with Iran at this point than, than Obama did, given where we are today? Well, look, it's a tenuous moment to drive, try to drive a deal, but I, I'm talking to Senator Graham, and I think this is a moment where if there is an effort for de-escalation, it is a moment to drive a diplomatic surge and to try to seek American leadership and engage our allies in a path that leads to a negotiation with Iran, both on its nuclear program mm -hmm. and its intercontinental ballistic missile program. We should, we should vigorously pursue that. Mm -hmm. If Iran rejects that, then in and of itself that will say a lot and where we go from here. I won't say it's easy. I won't say it won't be a, you know, a, a straight path, right. but I think it's one that should be approached and can be pursued. Uh, very quickly, this is the other big story, the other I word that on, the, on the Senate side, impeachment. Uh, would you like to see Speaker Pelosi send the articles over now? I trust Speaker Pelosi. Uh, you know, she went through a very uh, difficult and, uh, you know, uh, uh, detailed process in the House. I think she wants to guarantee that the House's will, in terms of having a fair and honest process, can be guaranteed in the Senate. I trust her judgment. Uh, it will come over soon enough, and, and then we will deal with the process. So you're okay with waiting still? I'm okay with trusting her judgment. I, I don't think we're going to okay. be waiting, you know, forever. Gotcha. Senator uh, Robert Menendez, ranking member on foreign relations, uh, thank you for coming on and sharing your views. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you, John.